I had never encountered it with patients talking about it in my practice, but I knew that if I experienced it eight times, this is not an anomaly. This is a real thing. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Aisha Rush coming to you from Florida today, actually. I'm usually based out of New York, Brooklyn, um, but today I am in my happy space in Miami, Florida, the beautiful city of Miami, and soaking up a little sun that is much needed. Today, I wanted to talk about something that I think is not um, as prevalent uh, a topic as many people would think. I think that a lot of women suffer from this um, and they don't quite know why. They don't quite understand what they're feeling. Uh, they don't quite understand um, sort of the physiology behind what they may be feeling. But I think that it happens a lot more often than what I have encountered in my practice. Uh, and also what I have known women to even talk about. What that is, that actually has a name, and what that name is, is dysphoric milk ejection reflex. What is that? After having eight children, I breastfed all eight of my children, and some of them longer than others. A lot of my breastfeeding woes have come in the way of me returning to work and having to figure out how to do the whole pumping thing, figuring out how this whole breastfeeding thing work with supply and demand and making sure that you're pumping on time and also dealing with the anxiety of not producing enough milk for your baby. There are a lot of women who struggle with this and I too have struggled with this from time to time, uh, having stopped breastfeeding when in fact I did not want to, but because my milk production wasn't the greatest because I had returned to work and was not able to really pump the way that I wanted to. But also when I did actually nurse and breastfeed my babies, I was having a bit of depression when I would start breastfeeding. So when I would have the letdown that most people, most women will feel, I would start having negative thoughts and feeling a bit depressed and just kind of feeling yucky. It's so funny because I talked to my girlfriend and she was like, well, breastfeeding is yucky in general. Well, of course she doesn't have children. And she thinks that anything having to do with children is yucky. That's understandable. Having children and breastfeeding is not for everybody. It's not something that we as women have to do. Um, it's something that a lot of women want to do and makes them feel more like a mom or a woman. But that should not be what makes you feel more like a mom or a woman. Just being able to be a mom, if that's something that you want to do, is in, it, that's the most important thing. But for many years, I struggled with this idea of having that sense of depression or that uh, negative feeling, negative thoughts, just feeling yucky, icky, feeling anxious, uh, when I would start to breastfeed in those first few minutes. And I just couldn't put my hand on it. I mean, it was almost to the point where I couldn't, just even the thought of even having sex uh, was just, it just made me feel awful. Uh, even the thought of my husband touching me made me feel awful. So this time around, I said to myself, there has to be something to this. And I decided that to research it. I had never encountered it with patients talking about it in my practice, but I knew that if I experienced it eight times, this is not an anomaly, this is a real thing. So when I did research it, I actually found a name for it. And I actually found the definition. Dysphoric milk ejection reflex is an abrupt emotional drop that occurs in some women just before milk release and continues for not more than a few minutes. Unfortunately for me, that definition didn't fully describe me because it's not just for a few minutes that I that I encounter that. It's actually for several minutes and al almost all the way through uh, my session of pumping or my session of nursing. Um, and it, it's actually very distressing. And especially when you don't know why, why you're feeling that way. It's, it's overwhelming at times. 
But what was really important for me and making it not as overwhelming is knowing that there was something to this. There was a name for it. I could actually put a thought around what was happening to me. That really became powerful for me. And this is the reason why I do these videos and why I educate women because knowledge is power. When you understand what's going on with your body, that is extremely powerful because it gives you a sense of peace. It gives you a sense of understanding and it makes that anxiety that you feel from time to time a little less because you understand what it is that you're dealing with. What happens when women are breastfeeding they have a drop in dopamine and dopamine is that neurotransmitter that works in the pleasure sensors of the brain. It's necessary for this to happen in order for letdown to happen in order for uh, breastfeeding to be successful. It's unfortunate, but that is the reason why they believe that women experience these negative thoughts or this sense of depression because that dopamine not going to those pleasure centers of the brain, but actually those pleasure centers being deprived of that dopamine is what leads to potentially those negative thoughts, that depression, um, a bit of that anxiety, things like that. Because we don't know a whole lot about this, there's not really a whole lot of information about treatment. There has been some proposed treatment with uh, things like SNRIs, such as Wellbutrin. How much that works, I don't know. And I don't think that anybody knows because there's not been very much research surrounding it. Unfortunately for a lot of women, especially during breastfeeding and, and, and pregnancy, there's not a lot of research for a lot of things. So we're often left out of these research trials for different medications and for obvious reasons. You're carrying a baby. We don't know how that's going to affect the pregnancy. We don't know how that's going to affect a baby neurologically or physiologically when we're taking medications, when we're breastfeeding. So those things are quite understandable. But at the same time, it's also a bit distressing knowing that you're going through this. And for some women who feel it so intensely, it's very difficult because they sometimes have to think about giving up breastfeeding. And that's something that a lot of women don't want to do. We are living in a time where who knew that there would be a shortage of formula. And so even for me right now, knowing that I may not have the ability to be able to just run to the store and grab a can of formula to feed my baby is, it's distressing. And knowing that I do have the ability to be able to provide food for my baby is wonderful. It's a great feeling, but I also have to deal with that other part of how it makes me feel. And it's sometimes hard to negotiate that. But the other things that they have sometimes suggested in terms of dealing with this is doing skin to skin with your baby, because it sometimes is also a bit of a reminder of why you're doing what you are doing and makes you feel good about doing what you are doing and knowing that you have the ability to feed your baby. I know this is a very short topic and a very short explanation for this, but I think it was something that I wanted to put out there because it's not a lot of information on the internet about it. Um, it's very scarce information and the remedies for it is even more scarce. But I want women to know that you're not alone. This happens to some of us. And now you know a little bit more about why it's happening to you. So I hope that this was helpful. If you like topics like this or want to know more information about other topics, please do like and subscribe. Always send comments or, you know, other topics that you all want to discuss. And I'm more than happy to go over them. Thanks again. Once again, Dr. Rush signing off from Miami. Have a great night.